Okay, can everyone see the yes. PowerPoint and hear my voice? Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, good morning, everyone. It's really a great pleasure for me to uh, to speak here, uh, describing what our project has done and try to fit into this new resilience project. Um, just like the resilience project, we are receiving the same source of funding from RGC. It is a collaborative research grant, and um, and we have a group of colleagues at at uh, at wondering what topic we should study uh, in the youth area three years ago, or four years ago, when we prepared the proposal. And, we and then we decided that we could focus on youth identity status, how the youth create a form the self-identity or fail to form self-identity and stuff like that. And, uh, and, and then uh, to begin with, let, let me just go back to some of the basics. Uh, I need to okay. So, so we 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 got to understand the youth identity status uh, status uh, studies back in the nineteen sixties, following the Erickson tradition and the Marsha, who were you know who were giants in the field, and then uh, in about two two thousands uh, the this Lucas uh, team in Europe developed this identity youth identity status. Um, statuses or clusters, which we try to follow. Identity status is a condition of an identity formed at a certain time. Uh, it's about its formation process, whether it's complete or incomplete, and whether it's stable or, or always subject to change. Now, youth identity and psychological functioning, a lot of the YIS youth identity status clusters, uh, they're found to be associated with depression, anxiety, self-esteem, risk behavior, so physical aggression, and so on. And then, as you will know later, that uh, achievement and foreclosure, these two clusters are being less associated with negative psychosocial functioning than other clusters. So it is, it's interesting to explore, explore in Hong Kong, you know, what kind of youth identity statuses can be identified. And there have been no previous studies of youth identity status in Hong Kong. And so our team in Suyuan University is conducting this longitudinal study uh, in, in Hong Kong since uh, since the 2020s. Uh, we, were, we were trying to find out, we asked the question, do YAS clusters identified in use in Hong Kong have similar negative or positive psychosocial consequences with new samples in studies in the West? So we we're comparing the Hong Kong situation with the overseas situation. Now, very the, um, the, the identity status is formed by two components. One is a commitment, uh, commitment uh, about exploration for the commitment and then, and then how committed the youth is. Uh, and then the other component is exploration in how in depth, in breadth, and whether it's still searching remuneration, with uh, rumination. Sorry, and then this, and then Le 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 Leakes and his team expanded the moratorium uh, status and the diffusion status to become to, to make each of them two more two more clusters, two more uh, statuses. So altogether, if we compare the cell here, four four cells are present: exploration. Um, in terms of breath, in terms of depth, and commitment, whether how committed the youth is and so on, then, then moratorium being expanded into moratorium and ruminative moratorium and diffusion into carefree diffusion and diffused uh, diffusion. So, and then a 25 item scale, the DIDS scale was constructed by the, by the team. All right, so with the dimension commitment, commitment, making the commitment or identify, identification with the commitment and exploration, in breath and in depth, and then ruminative exploration. So with these five dimensions, six statuses were identified, uh, achievement, foreclosure, moratorium, ruminative moratorium, carefree diffusion, and diffuse diffusion, right? Now, back to the study that we do, identity, youth identity status, and its psychological, co psychosocial correlates. 
a longitudinal study in Hong Kong. We want to identify various identity statuses among young people in the middle to late adolescence. They are basically secondary school students, age 15 to 17, and those who are students from the late adolescence to early adulthood, or secondary or university students, age 18 to 24 in Hong Kong. And this, this secondary, uh, post-secondary or university students, this age group would fit into the resilient projects, uh, the early adult, right? Now, this project involves four waves of data collection. And, and this presentation is based on wave one data. And team members, myself in sociology and Ray Shin Chung and Alex Lee from counseling and psychology, uh, Raymond, Chow, Raymond Choi, social work, Kelly Pang, uh, B, uh, BA, and Li Hang also sociologist. So this is quite an interdisciplinary team here. Now, characteristics of a sample. Uh, we ended up getting a sample of eight, 1,840 students with a gender distribution, 40 male, 30% male, and age percentages of, people, of students in the age group are as follows. And we have the category of 17 to 18, uh, which is the largest age group here. And then from 18, from 19 to uh, 24, Altogether, we do have more, uh, about 50% of them here. And so, right, secondary school students, 52%, and post-secondary students, 48%, all right? Now, this is, uh, this is uh, there are so, so many details here that I don't want to bother you with. Just wanted to point out that the confirmatory analysis of the scale uh, resulted in six clusters of YIS, and they are achievement status, which where you know where where, where the where the youth have formed an identity and also committed to it. Now, foreclosure is a situation when identity is formed, uh, but without proper exploration, just listening to parents or teachers or even friends, and then they form the identity. Moratorium, identity not just formed but actively exploring various alternatives uh, without firm commitments yet. And then this searching moratorium, uh, identity not just form, but searching while moderately a little bit committed, but uh, you know, not, uh, not, not very well developed identity here. Diffuse diffusion, identity not just form, and then doing exploration and no commitment being made. And carefree diffusion, identity not just form, a lack of interest in exploring and no commitment being made and you know and carefree diffusion and diffuse diffusion they are quite uh, different from achievement uh, these categories most probably are, are, are young people who, who in hong kong we say oh hey <laughs> this youth uh, the, the people young people here uh, okay, the percentages, we have 10% achievement type, which is the most desirable status, and then foreclosure, 22%, and moratorium, 24%, searching moratorium, 23%, and diffusion, the two diffusion categories are uh, about 21%. So this is the uh, ultimate, uh, 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 ultimate clusters or statuses that we have found in our, in our study. And then we, the next step we did was to um, look at how these YAS clusters or statuses could be associated with psychosocial variables. So for each of these psychosocial variables, we perform an, an to and, and, and these variables include life satisfaction, self-esteem, pro-social behavior, civic engagement, deviant behavior, use of social media, and career uncertainty, all right? I'll go through each of them very briefly. First, for the satisfaction of life scale, uh, if you put our attention on achievement status, which is the most desirable one, and the diffuse diffusion, or sometimes carefree diffusion, these two diffusion categories, uh, we compare the most desirable and the, and the least desirable uh, clusters, okay? So for life satisfaction, we found that achievement youth they have a higher level of life satisfaction than say diffuse, diffuse diffusion here, all right? And then self-esteem scale, we found that achievement 
you if they have a higher self-esteem than diffusion, diffuse diffusion category, sharply different. And pro-social behavior, um, we found that the achievement used, uh, they are more pro-social in terms of behavior and attitude as well, compared with the diffusion uh, status, uh, slightly higher. And then civil engagement, achievement used, they are more engaged in civic uh, matters. They, uh, you know, uh, service in the community, helping people and so on, civic engagement um, happen more frequently than those in the diffusion category or cluster, all right? Um, given behavior, uh, achievement status, achievement used, they have a lot less deviant behavior than, than say, carefree diffusion or even diffuse diffusion. So achievement uh, students have the least amount of deviant behavior. Average daily hours spent on SNS achievement students, they spend less time on the on the internet than diffusion students uh, you know probably they need to to do to work to to, to work uh to do their homework to uh, study and, and and or to to uh to uh, be to spend time on 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 on, on other important things than just always sticking to the end internet so there's a, there's a, a quite a big difference here and then we uh, next we look at SNS addiction, uh, excessive use of the internet. If men students they 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 are they are not as I mean they are not as addicted as diffusion students. Diffusion students are more likely to be addicted, but not quite the achievement students. All right. Well, lastly, we look at career uncertainty achievement. Are much more positive about their future career, and uh, they 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 expect that they would be doing well in the future career, and therefore they are very they have always been concerned with the future career and have always been working hard in order to 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 make that happen in future. But then for diffusion categories, um, they you know they 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 don't care about their future career as much as achievement status, All right? And then proactive career behavior, how, how, how likely you are doing, you're trying to, to, to get information about future career, about to learn how, uh, how what are the, the things that did become successful in future and so on. So very proactive career behavior. You see that the achievement youth, they are, they, they, they score, higher here uh, doing proactive career behavior than the diffusion categories here. Uh, so we compare. So so these are the findings. Basically what we wanted, what we have found is that the achievement cluster people, young people in that cluster, they 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 are trying to do better. They they are they are you know they they have a more desirable uh, schedule they are more pro so so they study harder they are less involved in although they they also use internet a lot but then they would not be using internet for for for, for so much in the in, in playing games and in, in social media and so on and they they have plans about the future so these are very preliminary findings but we think that there are implications for them um, academic implications for the study using the DIDS scale, which to measure the uh, status, the different clusters, and so on. We have, for the first time in Hong Kong, found that YIS clusters or statuses differ significantly among themselves in a variety of psychosocial variables. A young people in the achievement cluster. Are more likely than those in other in the social world and virtual world and exhibit less deviant behavior and career uncertainty. 
this analysis is based on one wave of data only, just wave one. Uh, when all the four waves of data are available later this year, the trajectories of the different youth identity statuses and their priorities will be identified. We'll be able to look at how, like, like when, when, when those who started in the achievement status, do they change over time? Uh, the or the the moratorium ones do they become uh, achievement type uh, you know in the course of time and and maybe some of the carefree diffusions students might finally end up being achievement status right so if we know the trajectories of these different statuses over time and their psychosocial correlates that will be very important. The findings will be variable references for agencies, schools, and government departments to identify and design new programs which can help young people to advance towards the achievement type of identity status and avoid other less favorable identity statuses such as two diffusion clusters. All right. And then this analysis is based on one wave of data only. When all the four waves of data are available uh, by, the, by, by the end of this year, the longitudinal findings will offer references for the development of more effective practical strategies. Um, now, the re re relevance to the resilience study that uh, Professor Tang is conducting, um, the question is, will youth in different identity statuses exhibit different patterns of resilient adaptation? If they will, what will be the characteristics of the relationship between YAS and resilience or adaptation? So basically, I'm posing the question of, you know, is there any relationship between YAS and resilience? Okay, just like we were, we were studying YAS and pro-social behavior, YAS and deviance, YAS and use of social media, YAS and, and the uh, career uncertainty. So can YAS be also related to resilient variables or adaptation variables. This is a question that I'd like to explore. And then will IIS also be a moderating relationship between psychosocial variables and resilient or adaptation variables? So sometimes YIS may not have direct relationship with resilience variables, okay? But would YIS, those clusters, would they have Will they sometimes have a moderating effect or conditional effect on the relationships between, between psychosocial variables and resilience? Yes, we have been exploring uh, this conditioning uh, effect or moderating effect of YIS, and we presented in two, uh, two conferences lately in the uh, conference on, on the uh, counseling and and psychology of of the uh, of the uh, conference hosted by Xuan University back in July, uh, we have studied the relationship between stress, stress due to social research unrest and COVID nineteen, and life satisfaction, and we find that why as uh, the has a conditioning effect between stress and life satisfaction and then in another conference back in december last year in the hong kong sociological association i was studying uh, the condition on criminal genetic variables and deviant behavior like family attachment uh, uh, delinquent peers and so on and then yas again has conditional effects on on the on the criminal genetic variables and deviant behavior. So, so what about resilience? Maybe YAS could have a moderating effect on relationship between psychosocial variables and resilience, right? So these are the two things that we we think uh, we think our study can tap and tie in with the resilient project here. And then lastly, can the measurement of YAS with the DIDS scale be added to the resilience project it's questionnaire for for this age age group 18 to 24 years of age which is the first uh, uh, age group of their study of the resilience study right so so these are the uh, 
these are the questions that I'm suggesting that may perhaps the resilient project could also take into account the YIS aspect of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the subjects. So this ends my presentation here. Thank you.